Vietnam War did not attend a July 4th celebration, but he is, by his own example, a source of great inspiration for many. I get up and do the same kinds of things that, that quote-unquote, normal people do. I, I go to work every day. I'm, I'm an attorney. Uh, I bring home a paycheck every two weeks. That alone is quite an achievement for Lewis Puller, Jr. He has come so far in the last 23 years from so far away. When I got back from Vietnam in 68. Puller's story of his experience in Vietnam and the years that followed stayed bottled up inside him until now, until he wrote his book, Just Out, called Fortunate Son. We just learned to keep our feelings inside of ourselves and stuff them. I thought that it was an important story that needed telling. Lieutenant Lewis Puller was only 23, a platoon leader in Vietnam for only three months. His wife, Toddy, was back home five months pregnant with the couple's first child. One day, while on patrol, a booby-trapped howitzer shell exploded at Puller's feet. From his book, I thought initially that the loss of my glasses in the explosion accounted for my blurred vision, he wrote. I had no idea that the pink mist that engulfed me had been caused by the vaporization of most of my right and left legs, and most of his left hand. It wasn't an accident. They were trying to kill me. Lewis Puller should have died then, but a quick evacuation and intensive medical care saved his life. I didn't want to be a career Marine. I wanted to go into the Marine Corps for three years and prove myself my father's son. Lewis Puller, Jr. was born in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. His father, General Lewis Chesty Puller, was the most decorated Marine in history. Lewis went to the College of William and Mary. He was going to be an English teacher. But after graduation, with the Vietnam War raging, he entered Officer's Candidate School. I wanted that one big battle. I wanted to stand up and, and, and for just a brief period of time, be my father's son on the battlefield. And that didn't happen. Puller came home to a shocked but supportive wife and family, but he was injured almost beyond repair. The emotional scarring was as bad as the physical scarring, maybe worse. Puller was bitter, not only about his own condition, but toward a political policy he felt was responsible for it. Before long, he was drinking heavily. And I can remember getting up in the middle of the night every four or five hours and slugging down, you know, an eight-ounce glass of wine and then going into a dark living room and sitting there with no sound, no light, no feeling, and thinking this is what it's like to die. It just consumed him and um, took over his life, and it was making him withdraw from me and the family so much. The Puller family managed to stay together. Lewis Puller realized he was hitting bottom. I, I had to see that I had been spared once. And I thought that I'd been spared for a reason. I couldn't see coming back and throwing all that away and then dying an alcoholic death. Puller entered a recovery program and stopped drinking. Next, he entered law school. Since the mid-1970s, Puller has run for Congress and lost, served on President Ford's Vietnam Clemency Board, served in the Veterans Administration, and is now a senior attorney in the Pentagon. Lewis Puller, Jr. Today, Lewis Puller is a regular on the talk show circuit, plugging his book. He himself is no longer bitter. He has faced death and self-destruction and learned about the power of life, with a lot of help along the way. The healing power of love, really, which is, which is remarkable. And to my mind, uh, no matter how far you go down, no matter how low the bottom is, uh, just, just innately with the right kinds of help, people are capable of uh, giving birth to themselves, really. And so we choose Lewis Puller, Jr., whose book provides a remarkable lesson on not giving up. He told the Washington Post recently that he has learned not to be fixated on his past, preferring to look ahead to the future. He's too busy to feel sorry for himself. That's our report on World News tonight. I'm Carol Simpson. We'll see you tomorrow night on World News Saturday. Good night.